Napoleon, have you seen the movie? Yeah, I snuck in a movie theater, man. I said, man, I got to oh. go see this. You know? <laughs> see, I ain't know that. I ain't yeah, know he snuck in the joint. I ain't even tell, I ain't even tell, him. Even tell us that. I ain't even man. know that. You know, I checked it out. You know what I mean? For for me, man, this was a part of the, this was part of my life. You know, I was I really was curious. So I said, man, I, it was eating me away. Man. It, man. I said, I got to go check this movie out. You know, right. it's about our lives, pot lives. You know, I, I would say um, the movie definitely brought I left the movie theater emotional. It brought back a lot of memories, you know. What did you think of the movie overall? I think, um, personally, honestly, I think, it, honestly, I think it could have been better, because uh, you know it's very difficult because everybody have their pains. Like, well, Pac, you can't really put the life of Pac in one movie, and you can't do this. I just think it could have been a little better, honestly. You know. I agree. That's why the yeah. Outlaws movie is next, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll talk about that definitely. <laughs> What what was it in the movie that you felt could have been improved? I just think, man, like, um, what would I say? You know, for me, I haven't seen movies in years. Like, I haven't been in a the movie theater in so long besides watching what I want online. But I think, you know, the, the dude who played Pac, it seemed like he was missing something. Even though he did a good part, you know what I mean? But I felt it was missing something. I felt from the director point of view, it was like more, a lot of the scenes, soon you get into it, it go to the next one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, man... I really think I just think it could have been better. You know what I mean? From the from the yeah, and that was you know when I watched it yeah. for the first time, the first thing that really caught me was how quickly they try to run yeah. through a lot of different events, and yeah. it was still a long movie at that. It was still two and a half hours, but right. yeah. I felt like there wasn't enough character development, yeah. like very important things in yeah, the movie, exactly. like when the, the the cops got shot when he got yeah. beat up by the police. It was like two minutes and it's gone. Yeah. You know what's you know crazy? Because they yeah. it's probably another hour and a half worth of scenes that yeah, I bet. they didn't even put in the movie. But you I lied when I saw them. Like, boy, <laughs> who this is who this coming out, boy? He didn't know. Man. But yeah, I also, man. I you know, my son, I, my my oldest son, he live in L.A. and I don't see him for the whole year, and he wanted to see the movie. So I said, you know, let me take him to check out the movie, and I enjoyed. The, the memories was there, right. but it, it had me conflicted because when I walked out the movie, I was like, damn, I think I should have never saw that. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? I was like, sad. <laughs> yeah. Now, people talk about some discrepancies in the movie. 50 Cent went on a whole tirade about an iPhone in the scene, which I don't even remember, and I don't even it's think not, that's it's even... It's not happening. <laughs> He's yeah, seen not a real. picture from the set. Right. When we was in between takes, yeah, <laughs> and I think Meech had his phone in his hand. You know what I'm saying? And because at times, you know, Meech remained in character during the filming of the movie, or he remained like in his wardrobe. Mm -hmm. so. But he was himself, you know what I mean? A 27-year-old kid. So he seen him with his phone, and they just assumed that part was in the movie. Right. And then he put up some Ciroc, which wasn't in the movie. Yeah. And then he was talking about hookah like nobody was smoking hookah 20 years ago. Right. It was in the scene. I mean, there was one discrepancy which was Tupac performing Hail Mary. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. At the House of Blues. Absolutely. Right. Which, which Too is, big of a song to leave out. Right. Yeah, that, you know, said that's a discrepancy. Like, yeah. They, which he put it in there. Oddly you know? enough, it was the same discrepancy in Straight Outta Compton. They did the same thing. Right. Exactly. With the same song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. With the same song. Because it's too big of a song to leave out. Right. You know what I mean? It's one of Pac's biggest records. So to do a Pac movie, some people think you can't do it without Hail Mary. That's why I ended up in both movies. Mm -hmm. Right, because I guess uh, at one point there was like a meme that was going around, like you know, I walked out of the Tupac movie when, and it was like, you know, <laughs> I with, see that the internet, yeah, yeah, when, when Demetrius was, was yeah, Millie Rocket on stage yeah, or something like that. Yeah, that was just playing. <laughs> they got it on film, I right? Which was not, which yeah. which wasn't in the movie. Yeah, yeah the internet not, crazy, man. man. Me personally, yes, I enjoyed the movie. I'm glad I went to go see it, and if you're a Tupac fan, you should absolutely go see it. Don't don't let whatever other people are saying, you know, detract you from seeing one of your favorite artists' right. life played out on the big screen. And that's the I thing agree. about movies, man. Like, how many times have you, you know, it's all about who's seeing it and what they're getting from it. How many times you ask somebody, yo, how was that movie? And they'd be like, oh, that was trashed. And you go see it. And you'd be like, I don't Everybody know what they were talking about. I love it. You know what I mean? But so, even going into this know? movie, I knew it was going to be criticized more than any other bio picking history because of the kind of person that Pac was and, and, and his his 
his aura, his, you know, he was magnetic. Even in interviews, to, his interviews is platinum, double platinum, you know what I mean? Like, because you can watch a pocket interview and still get something to this day, and people want that back. They want right. that energy back. It's, that energy is still around, but it's not coming back like that. Yeah. And Meech had an almost impossible task trying to recreate that. You're not recreating Pac, you know what I mean? You could do your best, and I feel like that's one of the reasons why nobody touched it for 20 years, you know what I mean? And I told LT when he started this, I said, yo, are you sure you want to do this? Because I wouldn't want your job for all the money in the world. I wouldn't want that job that he had, and I told him that. I said, I want, they couldn't pay me enough to do that, because you're going to get criticized so much. I think to add on to that, um it's been probably 20 Pac documentaries, so people know so much Too about much. his life. Then you got interviews from everybody who knew him about different things, so it's like people looking at it and wanting every single detail that they done had over the years. And, it's and like, the lies you know, become more popular than the truth. Right. Because it's a lot of misinformation out there. Right. And, and they become so big, people rather listen to that. You know, for years, it was still people thinking that Suge had something to do with it. Right. Like Suge sat in the, the car right. and let people shoot at them, and that was like the biggest thing in the world. People Even now, crazy, to this day, man. the people think this, you know. Right. But you know, everybody have their opinions. You know what I mean? I, um, my opinion might not agree with them all the time. They might not agree with me all the time. But at the end of the day, we still gotta respect each other. Right. And, and I just Absolutely. gotta say that that Meech did a very good job. I thought he did a great Tupac. job. Yeah. And you're not going to find anyone who looks... Maybe me, I love the fiery pop. Yeah. So when right. I see him in a movie and that fire come out and I ain't really hear it, I was like, oh, you man, he dropped the crazy. ball. Right. But at the crazy. end of the day... That's because you knew him. Yeah, because right. we knew him, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, not, watching a movie, I had it was times he looked just like pop to me. Right. I don't you think understand? they could find anyone that could look... To me, like closer he caught me to off Pac. guard a little bit, the yeah. body, the face, you know what I mean? Right, that's what I'm saying, the whole, the yeah. whole thing, the body, face, yeah, the build, everything. Um. One of the things that I came out. I saw him slam somebody in the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah you saw yeah. my Steven Seagal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You named Steven Seagal. Seagal. I saw him slam the dude, man. Seagal. You right. know? <laughs> what came out after the movie was uh, Young Buck said that he was actually cast as Tupac originally. I never heard of that. Buck. <laughs> I never now, now you guys, nah. weren't you guys signed to Young Buck at one point? Nah. No, we, we never signed but, to but Buck. There was something. You, you know, we was definitely was... rocking with Buck. Yeah. We was definitely rocking. We you know what it music. was? Yeah. We did yeah. some shows. You know what I mean? We did a lot of music. Us, Sebo. Mm. You know, we was definitely going to um, start a movement. He had Cashville Records. We was going to go over there and help with the launching of that. But right. we never got to the point where it was a paperwork signed because he had some legal issues. And Buck, okay. that's our brother, man. We rock with Buck. You know what it was? Me and him had a conversation about the movie. You know what I'm saying? And we was like, you know, you should go for the shit. You know what I'm saying? Stop try producing, to, man. You're right. My bad. <laughs> go for the, um, you know, try out for it. You know what yeah. I mean? But, you know, he did an interview. You know, running with it. Shout out to Buck, though. That's Today's the in-laws, you know I mean? man. No more curse words. Yeah, we ain't going to curse. You know, our brothers, today, man. man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now... <laughs> Jada Pinkett was in the movie, and after the movie her came character. out, was in the movie? her character, her character, her character yeah, that's what I'm saying. The Jada Pinkett character yeah. was in the movie. Right. After the movie comes out, she was upset. She even did an interview, a very emotional interview about how upset she was over how she was depicted in the movie. I've seen that. You guys saw it? The rest of you saw I've it? I've seen the interview. I've seen okay. it. Yeah. What did you think, based on what you know of the situation, her point of view? Um... Me personally, I think they, they represent, you got to think, Jada been doing movies for, you know, shout out to Jada, you know, I met her a few times, beautiful, awesome lady, you know what I mean, first and foremost. But um, I think at the end of the day, I'm not sure if they reached out to her to ask her to come and do dialogue, but she been doing movies for um, probably 20 years, over 20 years, and it's like, I mean, they create the dialogue. That's just what they do. Like, when Pac was in jail in the movie, the writers created the dialogue, so it's like, they try to um, create the dialogue between her and Tupac. So if she didn't show up and give it to him, I mean, they got to create something. But I think they was being, they was so respectful with it. You know what I mean? In my opinion, you know, even when like Pac really wrote that letter for her and she didn't know about it until after he passed away. Like to me, like how thoughtful is that for them to actually put that in there to, for them to, you know, have a, 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 a goodbye when he was leaving um, Baltimore, you know what I mean? But you know, She's entitled to how she feel. That was 
her good brother and her good friend, you know what I mean? But it's, it's movies, man. And, and if anybody know how they create dialogue, it's, it's a person like her, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you know, she been knowing they been having this movie deal since 2007, you know what I mean? She could have easily stepped in and said, let me help y'all with a little bit of this dialogue, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or she could have reached out and helped a fanny do the movie a long time ago. You right, because I mean? her husband is a I mean, pretty she, powerful guy in Hollywood. Pretty, pretty big she deal, reach, right? Yeah. She could reach anybody in Hollywood. You know what I mean? That, and that's, that's the thing, man. A lot of people, I mean? a lot of people with opinions about this movie had the opportunity to do this movie. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? It's not like everybody just discovered Pac five years ago. You know, everybody had the opportunity to do a movie. Yeah, LT was the one that got it done, though. Right, you know correct. what I mean? And a black man from the culture got it done on one of our most prolific and biggest artists ever. Right. Yeah. Ten times out of ten, it's always somebody outside the culture telling our stories for us. Right. So that was another reason why I personally wanted to be involved. Benny Boom, LT Hutton, they from the culture. You know, fortunately or unfortunately, they had to learn at Pac's expense. But I would rather see that than see somebody else come in and say, this is how I'm going to do this movie. This is how I'm going to do this movie. And we all just sit by and twiddle our thumbs and say, you know, okay. Because that's usually how it goes. Right. 